In so many areas of government, there are opportunities like this for reform. All we have to do is go out and seize them. Spending on prisons has nearly doubled in the last five years. We spend $49,000 per inmate per year. The national average is only $32,000. Now, other states have privately run correctional facilities that operate at half of the cost. Why can't we? And we are all too familiar with the interest groups and the army of lobbyists. The United States incarcerates people at a rate of five to six times that of comparable countries. The private prison industry, while not the only reason, is a major cause. In the early 1980s, American government at all levels was faced with the problem. Across the country, prisons were bulging as a result of hardship drug laws and stricter sentencing rules. Yet taxpayers resisted paying for more public correctional facilities. At the same time, about three dozen states were under court orders to reduce overcrowding in public prisons and newly formed for-profit corporations claim to have the answer to the government's prison wall. This is how Hollywood characterizes the culture of publicly run prisons. Sometimes television gets closer to what's happening in too many prisons today. But in today's private prisons, reality can be grimmer than the most dramatic television show. Government-run penitentiaries were introduced to the United States in the 19th century to house those awaiting trial and as a form of punishment for criminal acts. All of that changed in 1983 when Corrections Corporation of America opened a private detention center in Texas to house undocumented workers for the Immigration and Naturalization Service. This marked the birth of an industry that would profit from the incarceration of human beings. When you start letting private corporations start dictating how people that are incarcerated in society uh, you know, regulating that and managing that. You know, it opens up a Pandora's box, which we have seen uh, as far as abuses and as far as um, civil rights violations, those kind of things. Private prisons, if you go back and look at the, uh, look at the inception of the private prisons, you have people coming out of government like the FBI and the CIA and all these heads of people who have run these agencies are the people that actually started these private prisons. It's very interesting that George um, Wackenhut is a former FBI agent. Good afternoon, Wackenhut Corporation. How may I direct you? In 1994, the Mississippi State Legislature called a special session to address the problem of prison overcrowding. Since then, the Mississippi Department of Corrections has spent nearly $73 million on capital outlays for new and expanded prisons. 
Over 45 million of that amount has been used to construct for-profit private prisons. The issue of private prisons uh, coming to Mississippi is a new development in the incarceration system. We had, as long as I can remember, a state penitentiary, a, county for, a system of county farms, which was like medium-sized units for people who hadn't done violent crime. So it was a whole different experience, and nobody ever thought about it, I don't think, in terms of making money. Private prisons were brought in here at one point because there was an overcrowding. Well, now there is not an overcrowding. And just to have these, this, this to feed these prisons, like, oh, well, we'll take people in from Wisconsin, we'll take them in from Illinois, we'll take them, just, just because we have space here, it, 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 you know, then we're paying for this? It doesn't make sense. We